Six months ago when I unboxed my new 3D printer, I was amazed at its speed. But since then, a firmware update doubled its speed from 250 to 500 millimeters a second, shaving hours off prototype prints, allowing me to design and create faster than ever before. Just absolutely nossing it. So I thought, let's race it. Can I get to the store and buy a product before it can print one? But before that, Anchor Maker sent over version three of the M5's firmware, as well as sponsored today's video, so we can check if the bugs I mentioned initially have been fixed, starting with the AI. They gave me so many false positives, I disabled it. All right, we're gonna do what we're not meant to do and try to make prints fail. <laughs> the printer is going to check for the first five layers that everything is adhered to the bed and is where it should be and compared to the photos that it's taking and the sliced AI model. After this layer, I'm gonna sabotage. I've just moved it a bit and I've lifted it up right before it took the photo. <gasps> it's figured it out. There's been a bed adhesion failure. My phone's got the notification and we've got a photo. Is the detection accurate? Yes, it is. I can say, look, print anyway. Or from the app, I could just simply have said, nah, stop, that was a fault. The good news is I'm no longer getting a flood of false positives during prints. Actually, in all my testing, I've only had one, and that includes movement in frame. So now I'm gonna leave AI enabled because with the continual training and detection of real faults, it should only improve. And remember, no matter where you are, you can get the AI error notifications through the app, as well as view the camera feed on your phone and the desktop slicing software. I'm gonna open up the app, go to models, select the Benchy. It's been pre-sliced for us. Hit print. All straight from the app. Things are creaking. It's so fast. Woo. This is nothing, bro. Look at that thing. It's shaking the whole freaking bench. How? A software update. Back, back. Oh my gosh! Getting quicker because we're getting up. Oh, what? Since I bought my M5, I've become more inclined to 3D print. I don't hesitate if I find a file online as the printer automates so much of the process, it can feel effortless. If I need to load more material, the filament runout sensor alerts me. And direct extrusion gives me higher quality prints, especially flexible filament projects. Simply just having auto bed leveling overcomes the biggest hurdle if you're new to 3D printing. And built-in guides for maintenance, as well as an online knowledge base, really helps to get things back up and running. In the past, I mentioned a bug causing a tilt to the leveling result, presumed to be caused by the homing going lower on the left before each print, but like many other software improvements, a new Z-axis alignment sequence seems to have fixed it. This update has been essential for my large projects which use the entire bed, just like last week's video, where I designed, prototyped, and 3D printed a custom keyboard base for my friend Sass. The project itself blew up to two days due to the laser cutting component, but the modeling, two prototype fitment checks, and a final 3D print were all completed in one day. And this is where the speed increase is incredibly useful. I can get the ideas from my head into the real world faster. But how fast? <laughs> I'm gonna ride to the shops to buy before the printer can print, hopefully. Okay, my idea for this is quick and dirty. We're gonna go to tinkercad.com, new 3D design. I'm thinking a pen holder, something basic. No, not a square. Something like a triangle. Make this four for now to make the sides all the same. All right, I'm starting a timer. Let's just make the cup holder the size of the timer. 80 mil, that'll hold a lot of pens, surely. How tall is a pen? 90. Sides down to three. Boom. Duplicate and lift it up. Realign everything to the center of each other. There we have ourselves a triangle pen holder made in three minutes done. Grab the STL file, open up Anchor Make Slicing software, slice it up. Let's hit print. All right, let's go get dressed. I think the prints are now about 50 minutes. This isn't fair. This is a normal bike, and that's not a normal printer. Oh, much better. Slap a motor on it. I reckon it took me more time to pack my bag and get dressed than it did to model and slice the cup holder. I'm gonna let it warm up and do the first layer, then we'll head. All right, that's going. 
How do you think it's possible? Yeah, 50 minutes. Top gear, baby. This is a shocking hill. All right, let's move up a couple of gears. Right, three dollars. We've got the cup. It took ages to find something in the aisles. Well, oh, it's been 26 minutes. I can beat this thing. Now we can. Give us a green. Come on. Yes. 20 minutes to be home. We'll do it. Win. What the heck? Come on. That's unfair advantage for the printer. All right, there's bush land on either side now, so there's a little bit that now is lined. There's no protection. I can hear it still running. Oh, it's tall. It's got to be close. Four minutes 30. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I thought I was going to get smoked. I'll put the e-bike in cheap mode and just went full tilt. We're finished. I only just bet that. 54 minutes in the end. Oh, man, I'm tired. I want to go lay down. Uh, fun fact, I would have actually lost if the printer was printing at 500 millimeters a second. See, if we look in the Anchor Make slicing software, it's the travel speed that's been upgraded to 500 on the default fast profile, with the actual extrusion print speeds varying. I noted in the previous version of the software that the infill was set to 350 millimeters a second, and it now defaults to 250, suggesting that Anchor is still testing different default printing speeds. A travel speed of 500 millimeters a second can make a huge difference when traveling around to different parts of a print. For example, in this extreme case of an archway, all clips are laying filament at 50 millimeters a second, but the travel speed varies. We have the typical printer's 50, the M5's previous max, and the new 500 millimeters a second maximum. So even if you want slow, high quality printing, the travel speed makes a huge difference over time. And so how's the quality? Well, at the higher speeds, we're gonna see some vibration ripples, as well as these little splits in the corner. I could probably adjust the acceleration speed for that one. But it's perfectly good for my prototype prints. Overall, the pre-sliced bench is not bad, but there are some gaps in the walls with a plastic stretched at high speed. You can always take the time to manually tweak settings and dial in each roll, but I'm perfectly happy for the default results for my prototype prints. I'm being honest, I was a bit sad to see other printers release with the higher speeds, especially when I saved for a year to be able to buy something like this. But with those recent updates, it's now back in the fight. If you liked today's vid, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it, and I'll see you in one of these projects. Maybe the keyboard one? That was a good one. Bye. This thing is just absolutely nosing it. <laughs>